All right, let's uh, do a video here checking out this, I don't know how you say it, Roman's um, automotive diagnostic leak detector. So this is a smoke machine for detecting like vacuum and evaporative and emission leaks and stuff. So um, looks cool. I've never had one. I always thought it'd be pretty useful. Here's um, what they recommend for oil. It doesn't come with oil, by the way. So I picked up some of this uh, baby mineral oil, oil. Okay. So if you check it out. Got the hose. Here's the unit. Looks like a mounting strap. Power fitting for the smoke hose, I suppose. Um, power, uh, power input, I guess. And it's got a flow meter, it looks like. That's cool. Dial to adjust it. And looks like a shop air fitting, so you can push uh, smoke out of it. So, let's see what else. Okay. Have a hook. Go up here for hang uh, hang mounting it. I don't know that I need that right now. I'm gonna leave it off. Okay. Power cable with clips. Let me check. I didn't read, but I assume it's 12 volt. Yeah, 12 volt vehicle power. So it's been too powered off the car battery. That plugs in right there with clips for the car battery. It's super easy. And there's our hose fitting. Cool. And then let's see. Got the fitting for our shop air connection. I don't know what this is for yet. And turn flow dial switch. Yeah, I'm not sure what this is for, so we'll see. Some sort of screwdriver tool with fittings on the end. Don't know. And uh, shorter air connection or a uh, smoke output hose, I guess. So I don't need that. What I do need to do right now is attach the air fitting. So I'm going to use some Teflon tape on the threads. Because it seems like every time I don't on an air fitting, it leaks. At least on my compressor. So, okay, wrap that up. Okay. Air fitting installed. Got power, got a hose. And the only thing I don't know is where you fill the oil. Let's see. Screw the smoke. Fill mineral oil into the unit from the refill port on top. So, looks like up here. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, I don't see where else you fill it from, so it must be there. Let's see if it says anything else. Um, yeah, the directions are all on the box here, so that's what I'm trying to check. Yeah, well, top is definitely fitting for the hook. So... Yeah, it must be this. It's got a little rubber O-ring on it, so that's got to be the fill port. So let me open this up. All right, 
fill this up. And I have no idea how much it holds, so I'm just going to put this whole bottle in here, I guess. Unless I see it fill up all the way, which not yet. All right. Well, it's a full bottle. Should be plenty. Put the cap back on. Oh, you wipe it off. that off, put the cap on. Okay. The hook is tight, so we'll call that good. All right, well, I have my, uh, yeah, give me a minute. I'm going to get my air compressor and uh, power supply and we'll hook this up and test it and then we'll get it on the car and check it out. Okay, so I got it hooked up here. I have my uh, 12 volt, 13 volt power supply over there that simulates a car battery. So I have it hooked up to the red and black wires. Okay, and then on the back here, I flipped the power button. So lights up when it's on. Okay, I have my shop air uh, connected and I set my regulator to 50 PSI. The box doesn't say, so I'm not really sure what the limit is. I assume, you know, the more pressure, the more you'll get out of it. And then, like it says on the side here, close valve after use to avoid smoke oil backflow into the flow meter. So I had turned the meter all the way off. So now I'm going to go ahead and turn it up. And you hear the oil bubbling inside as it's being burned, I suppose. And then right away you see the oil from the hose. So cool. Pretty easy to use, right? And you can see, let's see, see the ball inside the flow meter. So you can actually see how much you're flowing and I assume measure the leak uh, with that. If you're consuming all the smoke at a certain level, that'll tell you how much, how big the leak is. So cool. Okay, well really easy to use. Let's go put it on the car. My car doesn't have any leaks, but we'll make one and test it. All right, so now we're over here at my old uh, 61 Falcon, Ford Falcon that uh, we'll use to illustrate how you'd use this thing. So I have the machine hooked up and running up there and smoking away. And I did learn something interesting. You gotta they put this on the box and it is definitely true. Um, you need to always turn off the valve uh, on the unit, which is right here. Oh, can you see it? Let me see. There you go. The knob there. You always need to turn that off. Uh, you do not want airflow unless the heater is on, the switch is on. So if you let airflow go without having the heater turned on, you will fill the hose up with oil, which is what I just did. <laughs> so anyways, make sure you always turn the heater on first, and then you can turn up the air valve. And then make sure you turn off the air valve first before you turn off the heater. If you do that, you won't have a problem. But okay, so we've got it going up there ready. And I don't, there's not much vacuum on this car to like illustrate it. Yeah, I think you generally use this for like evaporative emissions leak, but you could use it for like, uh, or like a vacuum leak for an emissions thing, but you could use this to like detect an intake leak or something too. Anything that's pulling, you could see where the smoke's getting pulled and find leaks uh, on your car. So, what we're gonna look at, so you know where to look, I've unhooked right here that large rubber hose that's a vacuum line uh, for my PCV valve. It's a positive crankcase ventilation. Um, so that, that, that hose is always pulling. It's a manifold vacuum that'd be pulling into the throttle body because I've got an EFI set up on this car. So I'm going to start the motor up and probably is not going to want to run very well with the vacuum leak that we've introduced. And we'll pretend like we don't know where it is and use the smoke to see where it's getting sucked in, uh, to find it. So I'm going to start up the motor now and get it idling.
can hear the big air leak. Let's see if we can find it. car sorry <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and shut off the airflow entirely and smoke stop down there now I can turn the heater off this is not my shop here okay so what I hope you saw when I zoomed in down there was if I'm holding the smoke out anywhere it's just blowing around in the wind that's fine but hopefully you can see when I hold it next to the vacuum leak down there you instantly saw the smoke funnel right into the hose so if you were trying to detect a leak somewhere waving the smoke uh, tube around and seeing where it gets pulled in will help you identify a leak so it can be a really useful tool if you're trying to troubleshoot that kind of thing um, so yeah, yeah, I like it. It works well. It's cost effective. Um, I see these in like professional level tools for like $2,000 and this one for a couple hundred, I think is pretty awesome. Um, so anyways, yeah, I'm a fan. It's a good tool. Um, really reasonably priced for what you get and it works just fine. So yeah, highly recommended. All right. Hope that helps.